Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Some questions in life are easier to answer than others. If you asked me, hey Jody, what's the best field watch I can buy for less than $400, I would say Hamilton Khaki King, thanks very much. If you said, hey Jody, what's the best dive watch I can buy for less than $400, I would say good luck finding one, but it's the Helm Vanuatu. If you said, hey Jody, what's the best dual crown in rotating bezel compressor style dive watch I can buy for less than $400, I would say, oh, can I think about that for a minute? To be honest, I've only reviewed maybe three or four watches of that style at this price on the channel over the last four years. Up until last week, I would probably have recommended the Spinnaker Bradner. Not outstanding, but a pretty decent watch. That all changed when this one arrived. We have a new number one, and it is the Phoebus Eagle Ray PY029. Now, you saw the pop-up, I'm sure. This, like every other Phoebus video on this channel and elsewhere on YouTube, is a sponsored video. They sent me this watch for free. I do not have to send it back. In addition, I am a Phoebus affiliate. What that means is if you fancy buying one of these for yourself or anything else at the phoebuswatch.com website, use my code JOHNWA10 for 10% off. They also pay me a small bonus. Thank you very much. Now, I really like this watch. I love the mixture of Arabics and Romans. I love the look that Phoebus do with this Eagle Ray range. Some of their best watches are the Eagle Rays. The GMT was great and the Bronze Eagle Ray was also a cracker. Not perfect though. You're gonna have to be okay with lots of octopi on your wrist and they've done a bit of a sneaky with the bracelet. Let's flip the camera and allow me to elaborate. Okay, let's talk price and color while I take it out of the box. 360 US dollars from the Phoebuswatch.com website, less 10% equals 324 US dollars. Unfortunately, no discount for the Phoebus Europe website due to taxes. Five colors, I've gone for the red. Again, I am a sucker for this red fade dial. If you're not into red, there's a green one, there's a blue one, there is a plain gloss black dial. My second favorite is this black and gilt. I nearly went for that, but I always go for the vintage style look, so I thought I'd go for red in this case comes with something they refer to as an instruction manual. No idea what that is. Two year warranty and a 30 day return to base if yours is dead on arrival. Now there is quite a lot going on with this one, not just from the colors on the fade dial, some of the styling elements here, the glossy internal bezel, the reflection you get from the sapphire crystal and the mixture of brushed and polished surfaces dotted throughout this watch, to be honest. You're also gonna have to be into cephalopods, no less than four octopi dotted hither and thither all over this watch, though personally, I could have coped with a fifth more on that later. 41 millimeters in diameter, Chunky though, 14.3 millimeters thick, so just because it has an inner rotating bezel rather than an external rotating bezel doesn't mean to say it's necessarily any slimmer. 47 mil lug to lug though helps bring it back down to size, as does 20 millimeter lug width. Bit of taper here down to 17 and a half on the bracelet, back up to 21 at the clasp. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist, I guess that increased diameter and slightly thicker dimensions are reflected by 165 grams. 316L stainless steel case, dual crowns and full stainless steel bracelet. Now it is solid end links and screw links. Good screws in here as well. Don't forget to pick yourself up a one millimeter screwdriver. You should probably have one of those in your arsenal by now if you are buying watches at this price. And it is a proper mill clasp with security pushers and three holes of micro adjustment. And as you can see, there is quite a lot going on across those 14.3 millimeters of girth. Fine brushing to the mid case. There's quite a pronounced high polished chamfered edge running the entire length of the watch. Brushing on the upper. Now, in spite of the fact that the bezel is fixed, they have given it a kind of coin edge style. There is a further little high polished lip sitting on top of that. And you can just see a beveled edge double dome sapphire crystal with three layers of anti-reflective undercoating. Two crowns, both adorned by the Phoebus Octopus and they are cross hatched for easy grip. They are also both screwed down 200 meters of water resistance. Both crowns screw down helping with that. And the fact that the bezel adjuster crown screws down means you're not gonna knock the bezel. That was a complaint I had with the Zbeck Corsair a couple of weeks ago. I think they're actually going to change the Zbeck Corsair, but it probably should have been a screw down crown in the first place. 
Now the bracelet, I said they had pulled a bit of a sneaky on the bracelet, pulled a sneaky on me anyway. I didn't actually ever review the standard Eagle Ray, the single crown version of this one. If I had, I would probably have known this already. This watch featured in my top six micro brands to look out for video that I made a few weeks ago. And I mentioned in that video, this Seamaster style bracelet. And if it was half as comfortable as the one on the Omega Seamaster, it would be a winner. It looks like a highly articulated, highly decorated five link bracelet. And it kind of is, it's highly decorated anyway, but it's not highly articulated. These are effectively, they may be five separate pieces, but they're effectively stuck together to be single length. So you don't quite get the level of articulation that I was hoping for. It's still a comfortable bracelet though in operation. Now the end links, those two mid links do jut out, but they do drop down, helping it drape and conform to the wrist nicely. What appears to be the now standard Phoebus case back features Octopus number three, screw down stainless steel, obviously, and it's nice and embossed. The Octopus is high polished though, so it will scratch if you mistreat this one. Usual spec sheet around the outer edges, advertising the sapphire crystal and the 200 meters of water resistance. And the automatic movement, do I even need to tell you what it is? Of course not, it's an NH35. 9 out of 10 micro brands prefer the NH35 and it is easy to see why when you look at those sets of numbers. Pretty much spot on in the default flat on its back position with a healthy amplitude and a reasonable beat error for a brand new box fresh watch. 21,600 vibrations per hour, so six ticks of the second hand. You don't get that smooth high beat sweep, but you do get bi-directional winding, Seiko's proprietary deer shock system helping with shock resistance, and a fantastic reputation for longevity and reliability. Now we may have all seen a dozen Seiko NH4 hour movements before, but I haven't seen too many watches that look like this. Apart from the Eagle Ray GMT, I think that one is its closest cousin. It had the mixture of Romans and Arabics. Before I go to macro though, let's have a look at this second crown. Let's have a look at that inner rotating bezel. Screw down as discussed, basically works as a dive time bezel would, but you can count up as well as count down. Everything lines up as it should, and when you screw that crown down, that inner rotating bezel isn't going anywhere. And I do like this red color, that's why I've gone for it again, just as I did with the GMT. It's not bright cartoonish red, it's a really nice, deep, subtle burgundy fade as well. I think it goes with the overall tones of the watch. So applied indexes, double baton at 12, singles at the three and the nine, and a frame around the date complication at the three o'clock. Circular indexes everywhere else, and there's that printed double railroad minute track around the outer edge of the dial, just beyond the indexes, with Roman numerals. You don't see Romans very often on dive watches, but I think it looks, I've mentioned steampunk before, I think there's a kind of mixture of old and new in this one with the Romans and then the Arabics on that angled Riho inner rotating bezel. There's just a little touch of red on the bezel as well at the triangle at the 12 o'clock. Octopus number four printed in silver above the pinion and automatic 200 meters, an uncluttered dial therefore printed above the index at six. Now the handset, all of these Eagle Ray watches have featured the same handset they always remind me of the 50 Fathoms Bathyscape handset. A large rectangular hour hand with a syringe tip and a slightly longer, slightly thinner minute hand also with a syringe tip. Lollipop second hand, final touch of red, pointing all the way out to the edge of that railroad. Three layers of anti-reflective undercoating on the crystal, but 15 layers of BGW9 on the hands and the indexes. Phoebus really have upped their loom games from their early models. Loom on this is absolutely outstanding, amongst the best I've seen at the price. End of the 20 minute test period, which I always think equates to about four or five hours in the real world, still everything glowing very brightly. Excellent job on the loom. And on wrist, this watch has a heap of presence, not because it's a particularly big watch, but because of all the light play from that high gloss dial, the high gloss inner bezel, the applied indexes, the hands, and all of those polished surfaces on the bracelet and the watch itself, not to mention the two different textures with the coin edge bezel and those crossed hatch crowns. Like I said, plenty going on with this one, plus the Octopi. Nice and easy to read though. It is a little bit thick at 14.3, but I don't think it is overly thick. There isn't much protrusion from the case back. It sits fairly flush on wrist. And the fact that the clasp is actually 21 rather than 20 kind of balances out the slightly large head of the watch nicely, I think. 
And outside in natural light, the light show continues. They talk about three layers of anti-reflective undercoating. I think there's a blue hue to this one. Looks okay on the red dial. I'd imagine it would look even better on the blue dial version of the watch. When I put it on wrist and I roll my wrist back and forth, you can distinctly see that anti-reflective kicking in and kicking out and kicking in and kicking out again. And my apologies, the pocket shots are real sh because my camera focused more on my fantastic floral shots than it did on the watch. So the new number one then, definitely the best dual crown in a rotating bezel dive watch that I've reviewed on the channel for less than $400. I've probably only reviewed another four or five though, but this one, very, very solid overall. Doesn't mean to say that I'm not gonna complain about a few things. I like the looks, but they are not gonna be to everyone's taste. I appreciate that. The octopus is loud and proud on the dial, on the crowns and on the case back as well. And I know that that is a proper turn off for some people. Me, I like him. I like him pretty much everywhere. And I would have liked it if they had added one more octopus on that clasp. That's the real old blocky Phoebus block capital font from the very early days. I'm surprised they haven't done something more interesting with the clasp. Also, color match date wheel or lack thereof. I, I could have gone two ways on this red one. I think on the black and black and gilt one, it should definitely be color matched. They should have spent an extra couple of dollars, I think, optioning that one on from the factory. And the handset, I've never been quite convinced with these Eagle Rays that that handset was quite in proportion. I've always thought that maybe the hour hand was a little too big and maybe the minute hand was a little too small. Let me know your thoughts, leave me a comment. It just doesn't quite look 100% to me. But I do like the Eagle Ray range. I think it is FIBA's strongest line of watches and there's a real kind of family theme happening now that there are three or four different models all bearing the same name. I would imagine that this one will sell out relatively quickly over the next month or so. I would love to see them reintroduce fresh batches of the GMT and the bronze. They were both Kraken watches and I'm sure that there would be enough demand to sell another 100 units of each. I know micro brands like to keep small stocks. It's much better for them as companies. They are micro brands after all but I think Phoebus is probably getting to the stage now that they could reissue some of their older models in confidence that they would sell. So there you have it the new number one the best value compressor style dive watch on the market for less than $400. There weren't all that many to be honest but this is a really really decent watch. I like the look of this Eagle Ray. I love the Fume dials. Great choice of colors. It's a very well made watch and it looks great. A little bit blingy, a little bit shiny and they have done a sneaky with that bracelet. I was expecting a five link Seamaster style. I got a looking like a five link Seamaster style but actually only a one link. I'm not complaining too much. It still looks good. It wears comfortably and I think this is great value. You. Don't forget the code JOMWA10 for 10% off. I will see you in a future video.